Hey guys, welcome to the DIY sessions. This is the first one out of five and hopefully many, many more video workshops that are available on my website. With these videos, I try to give you new ideas to create inspiring drum sounds. So whether you are a drummer with your own studio and you record music for different artists or you do videos on social media, or you are a producer, engineer or mixer and you're just trying to get some out of the box perspective on drums, these videos are for you. So we are not going to look into the middle of the road drum sound. It's all about how I treated my drums, how I played them, what mics I used and what engineering I did. And we pay especially close attention to what I did later in the box to manipulate the sound, to create authentic and vibey drums. So in this video, we're going to start with just three microphones. And we're basically going from this sound all the way to this sound. So let's talk about some mics and drums. First of all, ignore most of the microphones that you see, because as I said earlier, we're going to create a drum sound with just three microphones. The first one is a Shure SM7. It's just sitting right above the bass drum, pointing towards the shell of the snare drum. The other one is a Bayer M88 kick microphone that is just pointing towards the better head of the kick. And the third one is just a regular SM57 in a pretty unusual position. It's just pointing towards my shoulder. It looks almost in a way like a talkback microphone, but it's treated in a very special way. So with these three microphones, I wanted to capture all the instruments. That's why I paid close attention how I hit the instruments. For example, I was paying close attention to playing the hi-hat as soft as possible. While I try to have a steady um, and full sounding kick and snare sound, and because I had no tom mics, I had to hit them in a more intentional way that I would do if I have just close mics sitting on them. The other thing is I try to hit the cymbals in a way that they could just open but not be harsh in the sound because I knew I was going to use some compression and some saturation. So when you record drums with just a few microphones, you have to really try to internally mix yourself because you don't have 50 microphones that you can just dial up and down and automate or cut and do some man manipulation with it. Talking about the drums, this is my 1970s Slingerland kit. I record with this kit all the time. Tom's 13 by nine and 16 by 16 with um, Remo Emperor coded on top and Remo Ambassador coded on bottom to create a round sound. But as you can see, I just put some towels on it to just muffle them because I wanted to have like a punchy and dead sound. Speaking of dead sound, the kick has obviously no resonant head and a Remo Power Stroke 3 and this is a 22 by 14 inch bass drum. My snare, um, trusty old Ludwig Acrolyte snare from the 70s I think, uh, 14 by 5 inch with a Remo black dot coated head on it with a bunch of tape and also some muffling. Symbols are my Istanbul Exist dark 17 inch hi-hat and two traditional crashes, one in 22 inch uh, medium crash and this one is medium as well in 19 inch. So let's just hear the drums again. These are drums captured with just the three microphones. Without muffling. All right, before we get into all the fun stuff in the computer, I quickly wanted to say some things about drum recording because it can be quite overwhelming at times. So the best advice I can give to you is start with whatever you have and wherever you are. 
because there can always be the need for a bigger room or more drums or more microphones. That's why I started this session with just three mics, because I wanted to have a starting point where you can explore a um, creative approach to drum sounds. I recorded with relatively cheap microphones. Um, as I said earlier, I have three microphones on the drum set. I have a relatively cheap uh, ribbon microphone um, for all the percussion recordings. It's a Golden Age Project R1 Active microphone. Um, you can also use these super cheap lollipop style ribbon microphones. Um, they're great for percussion recording. You don't need a lot of gear to start. The best thing and the best mantra is just ear over gear. Find something that you want to work on and work on it in a creative way and work your way through it. Whether you have gear limitations or playing limitations or room limitations, just work with it in a creative way. So let's take a look into the session. Everything in blue is the track without the drums. Everything in red is the drum set recorded with three microphones and just one little overdub with the SM57. And everything in green is percussion, overdubs, claps and some of the layery sounds. So to give you an overview of what everything sounded like, here's the track again. So let's start with how I recorded the song. I will first mute the music and mute all the percussion parts and then get rid of all the plugins that I have on here. As you can see, it's quite a lot on just three microphones. But in order for me to get a cool and creative sound, I had to manipulate the sound a bit. Um, so this is what the drums sounded like without anything on it. So as you can hear, pretty boring sounding, regular and natural sounding kit and just a mono sound because it's just three microphones, not panned in any way. Um, I started manipulating the sound of the kick um, when I first engineered and, and mixed the drums. So the first thing I did was just gating the mic because I knew I would do a lot of stuff to all the microphones and the drum bus and do a lot of compression and saturation and I just wanted this kick mic to just be a kick mic because I had the two other mics that would just be in place for the overall picture of the drums and for the snare and the toms uh, so the kick in should be just my kick in mic and that's why I used the FabFilter Pro G and just gated it so once again without it and with it 
so it's not a super closed gate. You can still hear some of the snare sound because I didn't want to choke the sound in any way, um, but it's uh, a lot more tamed. The next plugin that I used was my DBX160 compressor. I use this compressor all the time on kicks and snares because I really like the characteristics of the tone of the DBX160 on those instruments. Um, in this case, I didn't really use quite a lot of compression, but I only just dialed it in slightly. Um, but I really like what it does to the sound. So once again, let's listen to it without it. And with it. All right, so the next plugin in the chain is the Pultec Pro EQ. I really like to use this one on kicks, especially on the kick in as well, uh, to get a lot of um, 60 hertz boosts, so a lot of low end, get rid of some of the low mids that I don't really need in kick in mics, and then boost some of the high end to really get the attacky sound and also some of the high mids. Uh, so it will be a drastic change to the sound. So let's listen to it without it. And with it. So quite a lot of low end without it. And boomy and fat sounding with it. The next one is a pretty great tool for kick sounds it's called the Kick Shaper. And I did a lot of manipulation uh, in the tone and enhance section here. So I really turned up the heat and the punch and the depth of the kick um, and also dialed in a lot of low end here um, that's why it is also again a pretty drastic change to the drums because again ear over gear i just wanted to use three microphones but i wanted to have a really modern sounding and fat sounding kick drum so again without it and with it So the sound completely changes and it's getting more into this sample and very mid-range, low mid-range sounding sound that I really like. So yeah, the kick shaper is great to dial in some, some character into kick drums. Uh, the next one is the Waves push-up plugin that I really like to use. Um, actually, in this case, I just pulled it up and had it sit in the default mode. So in the default mode, it's already doing something to the sound that I like, and it's a synthetic, punchy, pushy sounding, uh, that's why it's called the pusher, I guess, uh, sound of a plugin that I really like when I'm looking for something more modern and not so traditional sounding acoustic style drum sound. Um, so let's listen to it without it again. and with it. So again, quite a drastic change. Those two plugins went from this sound to this sound. It almost sounds like some sort of a sample, but it's played organically. And that's why I really like those plugins to mess with the sound and really go into a creative and modern direction of drum sounds. The next plugin is just a gain plugin with an inverted phase. I like to put this plugin on a couple of different channels that might have phase issues with the other individual mics. And I just um, bypass them and turn them back on and just look for some phase things that might be out of phase or that might sound better when engaging the phase button or turn it off again and um, sometimes it can be quite a time-consuming issue to figure out all the phase relationship, but I can just encourage you to just try. Sometimes there isn't even a right or wrong. It's just a different sound or a better sound or maybe a worse sound. So uh, just use those phase invert buttons and um, manipulate the sound in that way. The next microphone, the SM7, that is just sitting above the bass drum, pointing towards the shell of the snare drum. Um, let's listen to it again without anything on it. So you get the snare, you get the, the picture of the drums, you get 
the mid range of the kick, you get the hi hat, but it's very responsible for full sounding snare sound, and that's why I chose to manipulate the sound or push it in a way um, that benefited the snare sound. The first thing I did was get rid of some of the mid range, the low mids here, and some of the piercing sounding more high mids. So let's listen to it again without it. And with it. And these are the frequencies I took off. And this one. And while this might not sound disturbing to your ear, as I added up compression and saturation, those frequencies tend to be a problem. And that's why I cut it here, because I knew just around 3K is always a trouble area. The next one, the good old 1176 with the all buttons in mode. So full on compression on this front. Let's listen to it without it. And with it. So it's really responsible for a more defined sound. I really like what it's doing to the kick and the snare. And that's why I went for the all buttons in mode, but I didn't really crush it. What I usually do with an 1176, just all buttons in and really dial it in to get the character sound. But in this case, I started with all buttons in and then went a little bit beyond that point that I ended up with and dialed it back and this sounded pleasant to my ears, so yeah. The next step is saturation. I really like to use the Kush plugins for this. Uh, this is the Omega Transformer. It's basically just working as a one knob um, transformer saturation thing. There's also just clipping some of the uh, some of the signal, so you get a an increase in volume without a, an actual level increase. Um, so again, let's listen to it without it. And pay attention to what it does here and how the volume increases. So you get an increase in volume without ruining all the dynamics of the mix. Um, that's why I love to use saturation on drums, not only for the overall distortion sound but just to make the drum sound really cut through the mix the next one is again the fab filter plugin again getting rid of some of the low mids and some of the high mids again this time slightly higher but um, in this case i really love to do some small little steps and not really dial in everything on one instance of a plugin i like to make small moves that really add up and you can see this, I mean, this drum bus is just crazy when you look at it. But in the reality, it's just only small little steps and just nuances on every instance. Sometimes it's a bit more, sometimes it's just some slight increase in maybe the low end or maybe the high mids. And it's really working well for crafting drum sound, not just having one instance that is just responsible for everything, but um, really filter out something here and there, add something here and there. And it's like small little things that you put into a soup, small little spices, um, or just the the overall things that make something good. So yeah, sometimes drumming, recording and engineering can be like cooking something. Uh, the next one is a transient designer. And I just got rid of some of the sustain because I really wanted to have a punchy drum sound. We're getting rid of a lot of sustain later on as well, but in this case, I just wanted to suck out some of the room that was just brought up with um, the saturation and the compression. So let's listen to it without it. And pay attention to the roomy sounding nuances of the sound. So 
it just makes everything a little bit tighter. The next plugin again is just my game plugin with the inverted face, but in this case bypassed and we talk about the face stuff when we are finished with the next microphone because it's actually the last one. And the last microphone on the drums is the SM57 pointing towards my shoulder. It's a very basic mic, but it's a great sounding mic uh, in a very unusual position. So let's listen to it first without anything on it. So the first thing I did was compressing it again with the 1176 compressor. So this is what it sounded like without it and with it. So as you can see in here, quite a lot of compression. But I really like what it's doing to the, to the snare sound. The next thing I did was EQing the signal. I dialed in some highs, got rid of a lot of mid range, the high mids at around 7K. And then also dialed in some low end around 60 Hertz. And then just a slight little high cut here. And to give you an overview, this is what it sounded like without it. And with it. It's just clearing up some stuff and also adding in some stuff that I really found useful in the mix with three microphones. The next thing again was looking for some saturation. I really like the Nambrini audio version of the Lo-Fi Clipper. Uh, the Lo-Fi plugin is actually only available for Pro Tools, but Nambrini did their version of it. And I think it sounds pretty close in all the tests that I saw. Uh, so I really like this one. Um, this is what it sounded like without it. And with it. So again, saturating the sound, giving the sound some character, also doing a slight low cut here. The next thing I used was again the Pultec EQ to get rid of some of the low mids uh, to really clear up the sound. Also boosting some 10k and getting rid of some of the 100 Hz snare frequency that I didn't really need. So you can really hear a clear up of, of the sound. So again without it and with it. Similar to the SM7, I wanted to get rid of some of the sustain that was brought up um, with all the compression and saturation. I also dialed in some attack here, but not a lot. So let's listen to it without it. And with it. It's just punchy, giving me a good information of all the instruments that I needed. It's really helpful in the mix. The next two steps are again forms of EQing. Uh, in this case, getting rid of all the snare nuances here, or the body, and then doing some weird high and mid EQing here. So getting rid of this and this and this. I think I just dialed in some stuff and got rid of something later and maybe turned down something here. I don't think I did all those three moves just in one go. I think those are instances of just me removing some stuff that got too loud when adding some stuff later on on the mix bus. The next plugin is a really helpful plugin by Oak Sound called Sooth and it's just in the preset Symbol Smooth and it's getting rid of the annoying symbol frequencies that you don't really need and that are especially annoying when you're using a lot of compression and saturation. So this is what it's reducing. So without it and with it. 
So the crash symbols get slightly tamed, also the hi hat a bit. And while this might not sound like an issue when I'm listening just to the talkback mic or the SM57 at this point, it can become an issue when you add stuff later on and add a whole bunch of stuff to the drum bus. And sometimes those little frequencies can be really annoying in the mix. So to give you an idea of how I deal with face relationships or maybe face issues on drums, especially when working with a lot of microphones, usually I set up the microphones and then I check back in with the faces before I do anything to the signal. Sometimes I can get rid of all the face issues on just the preamps and just the face switches there. Um, sometimes I use the gain plugins in um, Logic and sometimes I check back because when I'm manipulating the sound in a very drastic way, face issues can evolve later on. So I have to switch the faces again. In this case, I knew that I have three microphones that were placed and they sounded pretty okay, but I knew I was going to do a lot of stuff to the drums, uh, a lot of stuff to the individual channels. So I knew I had to deal with all the phase issues at the very end of each and every chain because all the saturation, all the manipulation, especially on the kick mic, um, could really mess with the whole phase situation. That's why all the gain plugins are the very last plugin uh, in, in each chain. So the quick and easy thing is just listening to the individual mics and flipping the faces back and forth. So what I usually do is I just start with kick and snare and in this case just the kick in mic and the SM7. So this is what the mic sounded like. And I just flip a face and see if anything really drastically changes. So it's not a huge issue once I flip the face. So I move on with the SM57 to the talkback mic. Okay, so something's happening to the snare once I engage the face flip here. So let's listen to it with flip face. And then without it, the snare gets papery. So those two microphones are sounding better together when I flip the face of the TalkBack SM57 microphone. Of course, you can check with stuff like auto-align or you can just move stuff in and out. While this is totally fine and maybe the right way to do, in this case, I just wanted to have a good sounding drum set and I wasn't really aiming for the perfect recording. I was aiming for a modern and punchy sounding drum sound and I don't really want to get lost in all these scientific ways of dealing with phases. Sometimes a face flip is just the right way. So the next thing I did was I checked the TalkBack SM57 with the kick in mic. Um, so with the engaged face flip and the kick in mic. So we're having a good amount of low end and I'm bypassing the gain plugin again. So we found the microphone on which I should flip the face. It's the SM57 in the talkback position. So once again, these are the treated individual microphones with no bus processing. First played without the face flip. So not a really present sounding snare. And then I flip the face of the talkback. And there we have pretty good sounding snare. So in order for me to really create a drum sound and treat the drums as one instrument and not as all the individual mics, in this case, just three mics, um, I route the output of the microphones to one bus called drums. And you can see my drum bus right here. So this is just the three microphones. And now I'm treating 
the sum of those three microphones leveled in a specific way that I liked. And the first thing I did was using the Sound Toys Devilog, but not really engaged. I just wanted to have some character. So it's just no crush, no crunch, no darkness, and only mixed in slightly. But it's just adding something in a lo-fi vibe that I like. Um, so again, without it and with it. So as I said earlier, those are just small steps. I just wanted to have some character of a lo-fi and really gritty sounding unit, but I didn't really want to go for all the madness that this thing can do. The next plugin, one of my favorite and most used saturation units, uh, because it's very useful for drums, uh, the Good Hertz tube thing. It's a combination of tube and tape, as you can see, and I really like to dial in some frequencies um, so these frequencies really get pushed into the saturation. So without it, and with it. So it's really pushing some of the lows and some of the highs into it and also rolling off some of the, the high end here. And it does something beautiful to the sound. The next plugin is actually a freeware plugin, uh, the OTT compressor. It's just a beast and I barely even dialed it in, um, but I wanted to have some of this artificial sounding high end that this plugin can give. And I also dialed in some of the mid range here. So let's listen to it without it and with it. So again, small steps, but they're adding up. The next two plugins are responsible for some compression. Uh, first, I used a Neve compressor. I didn't really dial in the sound to really make it pump. I just wanted to get some sort of compression gain reduction uh, in order for me to really glue the sound together. So without it and with it. So you can hear how the kick sound is getting really shaped with it. And speaking of kick sound, the DBX160 again doing great stuff to kick and snares. And with it. So let's listen to the sound without those three compressors. And with it. So it's really taming some of the sound, but also bringing up stuff that I really like. The next one is one of my character EQs by Sound Toys. I dialed in some high end and I also got rid of some of the higher mids and also um, engaged the drive a bit to just give it some, some character. And I also did some of the low boosting here. So without it and with it. So it's really doing something to the sound without it so because of all the saturation and compression on the individual channels as well as on the drum bus some of the nuances of the room came out and were pretty present and i wanted to get rid of those uh, that's why I used, again, the Transient Designer by XLN Audio. So I got rid of some of the sustain and I also dialed in some attack. So let's listen to it without the Transient Shaper. And with it. So it's getting really punchy. So this is doing a lot of good stuff to the tech uh, and the sound of the kick and, and of the snare. The next plugin is again the Waves Pusher. I dialed in just a slight bit of highs here and uh, just pushed the sound a bit. So there's some compression black magic going on here. 
so let's listen to it without it and with it I love what it's doing to the kick sound The next plugin, again the FabFilter EQ, I just used it for just a tiny move on the the high end here. And it's not really responsible for a lot of tone shaping. But something wasn't pleasant to my ears, so I used this one. The next plugin is again another one of the company called Uxound. It's called Spiff. It's doing some sort of uh, frequency-based transient shaping, and that's great for the drums. In this case, I actually used um, a preset called Add Punch to Drum Bus, and I just manipulated some of the settings here, but it's really responsible to finish up the drum sound. Uh, let's listen to it without it. And with it. So this is what it's adding or enhancing. Again, without it and with it. So we're getting to the filtering plugin later, but because I mic the drum set with just three dynamic mics, I had no stereo image to work with. That's why I sent the signal of the drum bus to a bus called Chamber. And on this Chamber, I only have the Valhalla Vintage Verb in a preset called Drum Air. I really like this sound. It's just sounded like a processed room, but it's adding to the stereo image. So let's listen to the drums again without the chamber and then with it so it's all of a sudden wider sounding so the auto filter on the drums is just a basic logic stock plugin that I just engaged and automated it because of the track here. So what I did is I just did some automation to work with the cutoff filter to cut the highs of the drums. And the other thing I did because it just was getting narrower and narrower because of the, the missing um, high end, I dialed in some of the decay of the drum air room uh, from the vintage verb. So let's just listen to what is happening here. Um, here's what the drum sounded like just before the automation. because the whole song ended without the spacey sounding reverbed instrument, uh, the whole automation of the song ends and then shifts back to the normal sound, um, just in order to um, really fit to the music. So let's listen to the whole part with the automation. The last thing that I did with the drums was I just recorded an overdub with the SM57 mic because I really liked the sound of um, this microphone and I wanted this thing to sound like some sort of sampled record version of a drum break. So this is what it ended up sounding like. And as you might expect, 
the natural sound of the SM57 sounds pretty boring. So the first thing I used was the RC20. I used a preset called Drum Break 3, so I just went through some of the uh, presets. This is the one that I liked, and I dialed in some more distortion, I think, and added some digital um, distortion or saturation, and then I messed with this EQ section here. So you can hear some vinyl noise, you can hear some wobbling and some distortion, and it's sounding very lo-fi all of a sudden. Um, then I wanted to push some frequencies in order to make it really like mid-rangey sounding and really vintage. And then I used this one. Uh, it's one of my favorite reverb plugins at the moment from Safari Pedals. It's just a uh, basic sounding, but really amazing sounding spring reverb. So <laughs> let's listen to it. And I really like the filtering button. It doesn't have a lot of options here, but it does something to the sound. And especially when you blend it at 100%, we can just manipulate instruments into sounding really vibey and vintage. And this was pretty close to how I wanted it to sound. And then I just did some EQing here to make it sound even more boxy. And I think this is just for me uh, a game plugin just to use my fader uh, in a way that everything is lined up. Maybe that's just my spleen. But yeah, this is what it sounded like in the end. So in context with the drums. And another thing I added was this reverse effects. This is just a sample. So I wanted to suck the drums back in uh, just for dramatic purposes. So again, let's listen to everything. So I really like to play with some of those samples just in order to create and um, really have something dramatic that supports the drums. The first overdub that I did after playing the song was using the Minel Nano Stick. Pretty unusual, very large a chopstick and it has just a great sound on cymbals. Um, very weird sounding stick and I just wanted to have some sort of offbeat right thing going on um, that I'm somehow missed when I listened back to just the drums and the track. So this is what it sounded like without anything on it. And it's just recorded again through this very basic sounding ribbon mic. First thing I did, the first thing I did was doing some really weird EQ moves here because I wanted it to sound more bright and maybe more artificial in a way. And because I wanted to restrict myself to just mono mics, and I do this a lot of the time, it's just using the vintage verb again, just in a small ambience. So to create a roomy sounding right cymbal sound. And then I just panned it a little bit to the left in order to really enhance the stereo image of the track. So again, let's listen to it with the drums. I really like to overdub some of the sounds and some of the cymbals that I would play live on the drum set. Uh, because in this case, I knew I would do a lot of compression and saturation to really manipulate the sound. And once you do that with right cymbals while you play it, everything gets so messy. And I wanted to place this cymbal in a specific roomy sounding environment, play it with a weird stick. So everything was sort of a creative approach. and. I didn't really feel the need to play it on the drums because I wanted to have it as a special sound later on. The next overdub is just this super woody sounding 
clave and I wanted it to really sound wide. That's why I sent it to some delay and some spring reverb. So this is what it sounded like without it. The first thing I did was getting rid of some of the attack because it was a quite attacky sound. I knew I would send it through delay and reverb, um, especially the delay creates some more transients. This is why I got rid of almost 50%, yeah, 50% of the attack of it. So still a very regular sounding thing. The Echo Boy is responsible for the delay. Just very normal sounding sound. And again, getting rid of some of the attack, adding some of the mojo. And the great part is this spring reverb um, that I really like. It's an Arturia reverb. And it's so vibey. The next overdub is just this small little minor cowbell and I really like to play it not as a regular sounding cowbell but just on the edge here. Somehow this is my personal transient shaping. That's why I played it only like this and this is what it sounded like completely dry. Then I got rid of some of the attack send it through the ambience again to get some stereo imaging adding some of the highs getting rid of some of the low mids and some of the lows again really broad picture stuff here and adding a lot of 5k just to clear things up and then panning it a little bit to the left to really enhance the stereo image Next up is the bongo that you can see right there. Um, I must say I'm not a professional percussion player by any means, but I try my best. This is what it sounded like. First thing I did, because I don't really have a slap, I really used the DBX to create some sort of attacky slappy sound. Then I did some distortion to it. Then doing some weird EQ thing here, just to clear things up. Sending it again in the same room and sending it a, li a little bit to the right to further enhance the stereo image of the track. The next overdub are these little baby maracas. Um, and they sound beautiful, but I manipulated the sound with the Fabulous Saturn, basically doing a lot of saturation here and really manipulating the sound. Sometimes I don't like this plugin because it does too much to the sound. In this case, uh, it really altered the, the sound of the shaker, um, what I really liked. So. This is what the shaker ended up sounding like. And then I just did a low cut on it and did some saturation, which is basically a volume increase. The next pretty regular overdub is just the tambourine pan to the right with no plugins at all on it. So this is what it sounded like. Nothing to see here. But later on, I decided to have some verbed tambourine stuff um, in the filtered and automated part. That's why I did some like two and four hits and send it through some reverb. So this is what it sounded like without. And I got rid of a lot of the attack, added some sustain. Also clipped the signal. Then also got rid of all the piercing sounding highs here, send it into a fat plate to really make it sound wide and, and very bright. 
and because it was too bright I got rid of some of the high end here and I guess my game plugin is just in order for me to have a little bit more headroom so yeah these are just overdubs to support the vibe of the track and support the drums another overdub my kabasa uh, which I sent again through the safari pedals reverb and this is what it sounded like without it and with it so super vibey sounding sound and i just pan it a little bit to the right and the last thing i did was just record four passes of me clapping into the mono mic and because it was mono i just panned it left and right and I summed again those to one bus and I just sent those claps to a room. So this is what the clap sounded like without anything on it. Pretty flammy. Then I did some saturation, which is actually pretty big increase in volume. And I sent it to the ambience again. All right, so let's listen to all the percussion overdubs. So this is what they sound like. And adding in the right symbol. and all the percussion in context with the drums. So we're getting pretty close to a finished track. Again, the drums recorded with just three mics, one overdub with just an SM57, and all the percussion done with just one basic ribbon mic. Uh, quite inexpensive, but there's a lot of processing going on and a lot of creative panning stuff left and right and manipulating sounds just to create a vibe and, and create a track. So in order for me to glue all the stuff together, I did some processing on the mix, or let's call it master bus. Uh, the first thing I did was use the Chandler Curve Bender. Um, I have it on a preset called master bus and I just dialed in some stuff and got rid of some stuff. So those are just little nuances to just clear up some of the frequencies. Um, this is what it sounded like without. The next thing I used great for gluing the stuff together is the vintage warmer. I have a preset called Sean Everett Master. I recently saw a mixing class with him. I really like all the stuff he's doing. And he just put this one on his mix bus and just dialed in some drive um, just to, to glue stuff together. Um, and I really like the sound and this is what it sounded like. So it's obviously an increase in volume, but getting closer to the finish line, I really want that volume increase. Um, so this is some saturation, some compression, really gluing stuff together. So again, without it. And the next plugin, speaking of glue, is the good old SSL G bus compressor. And it's doing just a tiny bit of gluing. 
Uh, so again, without it. And the last one is this one. I don't know what it's doing. It's been recommended to me um, too many times and it's sort of clearing up some of the nuances. Um, it's helpful. You don't need it, but sometimes it's good to have. So again, without it. And the last one in the chain, it was engaged because I just needed the volume for the screen recording, but it's not really doing a lot to the sound characteristics, but only to the volume. So again, without it. So that's it for today. I hope you liked it. I hope you got something out of it. I had a ton of fun producing it. I mean, it's just amazing what you can do with three mics and a bunch of processing. So again, ear over gear, create something beautiful with it. If you are interested, I have four other video workshops on my website. So I see you guys there. Let me know if you have any questions. Feel free to reach out and I see you guys next time. Bye.